The ocean is a complicated place where things exist in a delicate equilibrium. Take one species off the scale, and the ecosystem can quickly become out of balance. That's what happened when sea stars essentially vanished from the entire west coast starting in 2013 due to a mysterious ailment called sea star wasting disease. The disease hit during a marine heat wave, and researchers are still working to determine what caused the die-off. But the impacts to other plants and animals, that's becoming more clear. One of the hardest hit species was the sunflower sea star. It's big, it's the size of an extra large pizza. It has 20 arms and it's a really big, voracious predator, uh, especially of sea urchins. Sarah Gravem, a biology researcher at Oregon State, says without sea stars to keep the urchins in check, their populations have exploded. Those urchins eat kelp. And so they have just been mowing down the kelp forests, eating those kelp down to like nubs and forming what's called urchin barrens. Without kelp forests, young fish have no place to seek refuge from predators. And species like abalone, which eat kelp, have declined. It's having, having cascading effects on like literally hundreds of species. But until now, researchers haven't been able to directly link the die off of sea stars with the dwindling of kelp forests. To do so, Gravem and fellow biologist Aaron Galloway helped lead a study of the animals, delicately collecting sea stars from the waters off Washington State to study how they prey on urchins. Over the course of several weeks, they watched how sea stars eat, tracking the animals using artificial intelligence, and finally put a number on just how prolific these predators could be. Since we know that they can eat 0.68 urchins a day, that there was no number like that before. And that number could help provide a solution to the problem of urchin barrens. Sea stars have shown few signs of recovery, but Gravem and Galloway said that if they're given the chance, the creatures could restore balance to the oceans off the West Coast. Our only chance of really recovering at the scale that needs to happen, um, our kelp forests, is, I think, through like the natural recovery of predators. Whether that means transporting sea stars from areas where they endured the wasting disease or using captive breeding programs, Gravem said it's clear that humans need to step in. I think at this point, if we don't intervene, it's going to be 50 years before we get these things back. Kale Williams, KGW News.